to talk is um, things like uh, I'll introduce a little bit about the biobanking in Korea and um, this is the activities of the human serum bank and the networks. And then um, one of the projects that the serum bank and we are doing is the standard reference material for diagnostics. We are um, manufacturing them and then the last one is the ankles the network that I would like to introduce. So in Korea, there is this law of bioethics and safety law. So for human drive specimens, biobanks, uh, they call this the human material bank. And if you want to establish or run one, then you have to get a permission from the um, Ministry of the Health and Welfare. And um, in this law, um, it defines all the requirements. Where some are very specific, some are not very specific. So the uh, requirements for staff, facility, even equipment, and all that. So in Korea, um, the government funded uh, biobanks are in maybe two groups, the, the ones that um, supported by the Ministry of Health and Welfare, and there is a, a Korea Biobank Network, so what, the biggest one in Korea. It, it has one national biobank and seven regional biobanks located in U university hospitals. And then there is a national culture coalition for preferences that are run by KCBC and KNIH. And then there are uh, biobanks that is supported by uh, under the Ministry of Science, Technology, and ICT. So uh, the, there is a CRIP that has Korea Human Gene Bank. They mostly provide the clones of human genes. And um, you may know that there are KMRRC program. There are still 27 RRCs are in operation. And among them, six are human material biobanks. And those are Korean Cell Line Bank, Liver Cancer Specimen Bank, Korean Prostate Bank. Uh, we have a poster of a prostate bank, and Korean International Biobank for Infectious Diseases, Korean Gynecology Cancer Bank. I think we have a poster for that bank, and Human Serum Bank. And there is a bank for pathogenic viruses, which is classified as a microbial. So. That is also, um, I was included in human uh, derived materials. So this human serum bank uh, is, is within the KNRC program. It started in 2010. And so this is the director Cha, Youngju Cha, uh, a professor at Jungang University Medical School. And she's been running this biobank, and this biobank mainly collects the uh, human specimens uh, containing high risk viral agencies like HIV, uh, hepatitis, and sclerosis, and uh, some of the uh, nasty ones. <laughs> and, um, and this human serum bank has distribution network. So the public part is to um, set up the national standards and the proficiency test. And the private um, venue is for universities for research and uh, development and uh, quality control and clinical trials and uh, for industry too, for production or developing um, uh, commercial products and also have overseas um, uh, networks. It shows here, uh, so we have domestic um, networks and global networks. So these are some are project phases and some are disease specific. So for um, international networks, uh, this human serum bank uh, signed the MOU with Togo Health, Ministry of Health in um, Kenya and Tanzania for um, HIV um, specimen, infective serum 
And most recently, uh, they signed an agreement with Uganda for the transfusion services. And with the Vietnam, there are other uh, countries in um, Asia, but uh, with Vietnam, it's uh, about the dengue um, fever uh, collaboration in research, too. So in this human serum bank, um, this is a list of the immunology control materials. So they collect the serum of normal serum to for control and the uh, infected serum. And then from those infected serum, you um, collect these um, control materials. So the Korean Ministry for Food and Drug Safety is uh, providing uh, reference standards materials for um, yeah, this is the uh, definition uh, they said for control standard in tests or evaluation for the quality control of drugs uh, they provide and these are the uh, procedures they do they uh, follow so they they provide hundreds of the um, different materials, and you can um, you can get that list, and you get these uh, reviews, advisor reviews, and, and register, and then you do the stability test in uh, different uh, organizations, and uh, then it is uh, uh, registered as a standard material. It's just a procedure. And there are five kind categories of the standard material they provide. And um, I will mostly focus on the uh, in vitro diagnostics um, uh, or medical devices that reference material thing. And of course, they provide these other uh, categories, and you can get the uh, list from the uh, government website. So um, I'll focus on the uh, reference standards of HIV, human immunodeficiency virus that cause AIDS. And um, these are the things that um, they provide from MSDS. And um, this HIV testing is done mostly for diagnosis and then surveillance uh, what on nationwide or worldwide, WHO is doing a worldwide survey. And also the blood transfusion safety. So you get the blood donation and before you give that blood to someone to, for transfusion, you have to test all this list of um, infections. But there are some challenges of this test that we need a sensitivity, specificity, cost, and the uh, um, section of HIV and HIV-2. And I think there are other types, but these are the HIV-1 is the most prevalent one, and the HIV-2 is the second one. And this shows the uh, basic principle of uh, testing the uh, antibodies. Um, I mean, you maybe you have done the LISA or Western blood in your lab, so you know the principle. I want to show a little bit of the statistics. So this is from WHO that I was surprised that uh, people living with HIV in 2018, 37.9 million people in the whole. So that was quite, um, in number than I expected. And as this shows um, among the different areas, as you can see, the majority of the AIDS are patients are in uh, Africa. And in Asia and Pacific uh, region has 5.9 million in 2018, which is about 15, 16 points of the whole world. It is still in Asia and Pacific region. I saw quite higher than I thought before. <laughs> and in Korea, uh, in 1987, we uh, have the Act on Prevention of Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome Act, which 
according to this law, if you um, wherever you are and get found out like um, instant finding, right? Let's say you found the uh, someone has the HIV virus, then you have to report to the government agency. So this law requires that. So we have uh, statistics from 80, 1985 to 2018. It is total uh, notified. So it's, it may not uh, be as, it may uh, be different, but the actual number may be different. But the reporting numbers are like 13,000 people. And we have about 1,000 new cases every year. So you can see we have a very small number of HIV infected people in Korea. That's why we need um, connection <laughs> to uh, Africa to get um, yeah, effective serum. So I would like to focus on the, that type two, which is um, the second um, most uh, prevalent, not as it should, infectious phase HIV-1. It take, it's known that it takes about longer time to get the symptoms, symptom, but once it gets into the uh, symptom, then it can be very fatal too. So the um, cross reactivity between antibodies that is um, can lead to a misdiagnosis. So we need to we need to differentiate HIV and HIV two. And recently, um, it's increasing in Europe and India, and United, even in the United States. So they are uh, more of the uh, differential diagnosis for type one and type two. So the, the demand will is increasing. So in this human serum bank, um, we um, we received this um, serum uh, plasma I think from. Um, I think it was from uh, Togo, but we get this um, infected serum and receive a procedure to uh, make a standard material. So it's a saw, there are conversion, we saw, we filtrate, we keep it filtrated, and then uh, into, into the tube. And after this, of course, we do the Western blood and um, PCR for uh, testing. So this is the uh, first um, HIV type 2 standard material made in Korea. <laughs> so uh, the, the Human Serum Bank uh, manufactured this standard in uh, the first one is 2015, I think. So established in 2015, and the stock is uh, running out. So we are again have a project making more this year. Because <laughs> it's a, this human serum bank is like the only uh, place that are capable of doing this right now. I can say, but there may be more uh, in the future. So uh, the ankles, uh, you may never heard. But this is the uh, Asian Network of Clinical Laboratory Standardization and Harmonization that I recently started to work in the network. And this work was actually uh, established in 1999, 10 years older than ANRC. <laughs> so this is for, um, this is the goal of this um, uh, organization network. And, and we have a uh, Homepage, it's just ankles.org, so you can find more information there. And there is this aqua assay program. It's a external proficiency testing program that is aquas. And um, it is done in four areas: chemistry, hematology, correlation, and urine analysis. At the Department of Medical uh, College in Chungwan University. And now, um, 134 labs from 14 Asian countries are participating in this program. And um, this, um, well, I'm learning, I'm learning about this network. <laughs> and they, in Asian uh, countries, they, some of them are very um, 
this network help to establish the national uh, program for this uh, EQA, they call it EQA, external quality assurance programs. And we're gonna have a meeting in November in South Korea. So <laughs> I'm gonna, it's still late to maybe make a, a travel plan, but I just uh, wanted to introduce the meeting that uh, the theme is the Advancing Laboratory Diagnostics Asian Network Meets Africa. So we'll have um, speakers from Asian countries and uh, from Africa, Sierra Leone, Uganda, Tanzania. And we have uh, uh, speakers from Philippines, two speakers actually from Philippines, Marisa uh, from uh, Department of Health, <laughs> I think, and uh, uh, Dr. Hanyes. Hanyes is from PCQACL. There is a, um, mostly the pathologist uh, network they are, that they have meetings of India. So you don't know. PCQACL. Hanyes. So the president uh, that, that is from Philippines uh, will come. So that's what I'd like to and this is just a very simple summary that it's like maybe a home take on the city that the uh, one of the important roles of biobank is especially the Zion Bank is providing material for in vitro diagnostics. And it is a maybe uh, very um, the connection to the industrial part and really important for the sustainability of the biobanks. And it is essential for validation, developing the test kits and validating and also quality control. All this, we need these specimen controls and positive controls and negative controls for the uh, test kits. And for that role, you need a well-established and strong network like ANRSD. So that's it, my talk. Thank you.